Hi everybody, my name is Rohan Kapoor and I'm the product manager of Ethos Flex, which is Adobe's new CI-CD orchestration platform. In this talk, I'll give you an overview of Adobe's internal developer platform, IDP, and share some learnings from Ethos Flex, which was launched last year and is a key component of our IDP. So our IDP's motto is to help developers write better software faster. And these developers write code on behalf of three primary clouds of Adobe, which are Document, Creative, and Experience Cloud. These consist of various products like Acrobat, uh, Photoshop, and Adobe Experience Platform, to name a few. These products are using several platforms like you know, data, content, and sensitive machine learning. Both product and platform services run on top of the Adobe IDP. Finally, the IDP runs on top of AWS, Azure, and our own data centers. So back in 2012, Adobe had already moved to a subscription model, which was a game changer. From 2015 to 2017, Adobe made the decision to move to a cloud-native containerized model, and the Ethos team was created, which I'm part of. Ethos started its journey by moving initially to Apache Mesos. In 2018, we built Abstraction to move clients over to Mesos and created the Platform Champions program, where we did enablement training and brought in uh, more than 1,000 services in a calendar year. From 2019 to 2020, uh, Kubernetes had matured, and you know we decided to essentially migrate to it and created two offerings, namely CAS, which is Abstracted PavePath CI CD, and PASS, which is DIY uh, Do It Yourself. The good news was that our abstraction on the DCOS or Mesos uh, you know, platform came handy, and we were able to migrate over these services to Kubernetes. Come 2021, we started building you know, Ethos Flex, which brings the best of both worlds. And in 2022, we launched Flex. We also did an internal and external IDP workshop to share our perspective on the IDP and collect common developer pain points. Finally, um, in 2023, our focus is to support more than 5,000 developers uh, deploying code across uh, 250, uh, more than 250 Kubernetes clusters. We also made the decision to choose uh, Backstage as our internal developer portal. So in the middle is our internal developer. And as you can see, our internal developer constantly navigates a magnitude of different technologies, tools, uh, as well as the you know, endearing CNCF landscape, uh, which essentially leads to high cognitive load. The point I'm trying to make is that these capabilities exist across the board at Adobe, but some of these are disparate and disjointed. Uh, when I first joined this team, we started off by benchmarking the time it takes developers to get from zero to uh, production readiness. Uh, based on the results, we found that it takes uh, you know, developers more than a month to do so, and 70% of the time is consumed when developers integrate with external tools and have to wait to get access to them, which is the wait time. So based on this, you know, we prioritize the pain points and we are already in the process of automating onboarding and we have already worked on uh, reducing wait times. Uh, we are slowly uh, but surely you know, seeing the benefits of that. Uh, there, there's obviously a lot more work to be done. Okay, so these are all the capabilities which we've identified as the key components of an IDP. I wanna mention that we are still early in our journey to integrate these, uh, to reduce silos across Adobe and bridge gaps, but our goal is to make incremental progress on each of these and partner with you know, different teams. So looking at the three developer uh, lifecycle phases, which are highlighted in yellow, green, and blue, uh, the first one is Discover and Create, which provides capabilities that address the initial part of the development lifecycle, which includes you know, onboarding, uh, you know, documentation, training, local development, etc. The integration and deploy capabilities cover deployment, configuration of resources, integration of various systems, to name a few. I will be covering you know, uh, delivery and deployment and workflow orchestration, which are highlighted. Finally, we have the Operate and Improve phase, that includes cluster management, observability, monitoring, and cost efficiency, to name a few. At the bottom, you can find a GitHub link showing a detailed view of the IDP, and we'd like your contribution and comments on it. 
So our incumbent CI-CD solution is being leveraged by more than 3,000 services today. However, it has some limitations which did make it conducive for a larger number of clients who still use our DIY model. And some of those you know, limitations are lack of customization of the deployment pipeline, waiting in the queue, uh, not being able to contribute code easily, which made us the bottleneck uh, you know, to unblock our clients. The new deployment model of Flex, on the other hand, uh, makes it very easy for clients to co- customize the deployment pipeline uh, as it leverages the open source Argo project and facilitates open contributions. In addition, uh, we support deployment models like Canary with Analysis, which uh, isn't possible uh, you know, with our CI-CD tool, the incumbent tool. And there is no need to wait in the queue as you know, Flex is primarily GitOps space. So this is a slide shared by one of our clients using Flex, where you can see that in the old CI-CD tool, they had a total deployment time of 45 minutes, which was primarily due to babysitting deployments in the queue uh, waiting for the pipeline to complete for each of the environment. With the new model, you can see that that t- time has been reduced to only five minutes, primarily due to the GitOps nature, uh, GitOps deployment model of Argo and Flex, which facilitate you know, pr- a parallel deployment across environments. Let's take a look at those learnings and starting with the first learning, um, which is uh, treating internal developers like external customers. So I come from a technical consulting background where everything we did was tailored for clients. Uh, I strongly believe we need to have the same mentality towards internal developers as they too are our clients. So uh, this essentially involves uh, focusing on building relevant abstraction to reduce complexity, improve developer experience. Uh, Learning also plays a big role. And at Adobe, we have a platform champions program where we encourage participation by publicly recognizing, uh, you know, platform champions who have completed certifications with the community and the leadership. Next, I want to share, uh, you know, some learnings from our internal go-to-market launch of Ethos Flex. Uh, First is creating a GTM checklist to cover the most important aspects. In addition, you know, doing a pre-mortem, which includes meeting with your platform team three to six months before launch and listening to the concerns in a candid manner. I've actually shared a a pre-mortem template, uh, which I built in Miro and shared a link to the parent template from from where I got this idea. The other thing we did was a product lighthouse where we worked with early adopters of our product and prioritized key features for them. This was very helpful in shaping the product that we have today. Finally, this may be uh, preaching to the choir, but it's paramount to constantly engage and listen to your developers. Uh, This could happen with surveys or in real time. In case of surveys, uh, consider sharing the results openly with everybody and proactively act on the feedback. Tracking the success of your IDP is critical, but it's also important to set realistic goals and follow through on those. Now, One way you can do that is by leveraging OKRs, which are objectives and key results. I've given an example of what an OKR focused on stability might look like. Uh, I've also included some initiatives on how to accomplish some of those goals. Um, In addition, uh, there are other ways to measure performance of your platform. Uh, From my experience, you know, I could share things like uh, tracking how long something takes, measuring adoption rate, churn rate, Uh, collecting developer feedback either quarterly or twice a year. At Adobe, we track NPS holistically and CSAT at a feature level. Now, as you go through your uh, IDP journey, uh, you have to adapt and pivot depending on the situation, and there will be turbulent times. You know, some hard decisions uh, will have to be made, like pausing new feature development work or reducing outreach in favor of stability. Uh, Another one could be ending trainings that consume time in favor of a more self-serve model. Uh, So in general, you know, it's always a good idea to retire unused feature with low low adoption. Uh, You may also need to make uh, strategic trade-offs to make key decisions. An example is, you know, you may need to compromise on reducing complexity uh, to meet certain security mandates, but it's important to be vocal about resultant challenges with leadership 
and keep finding opportunities to automate. Finally, you know, change may not be such a bad thing, uh, which could happen either at a team level uh, with some platform developers joining uh, other squads or via organization uh, level changes where two previously orgs uh, or two previously siloed orgs could, you know, join hands to streamline processes. So first up, the image that you see uh, was generated in a tool called Adobe Firefly, which is a generative AI tool. It leverages Ethos Flex as its uh, CI CD engine. The analogy I'm really trying to draw, or draw is that the amount, uh, the, the armored figure that you see is actually a developer who is trying to grab a hypercube, which is the IDP. I'm honestly not sure how accurate this is, but we'll see. Uh, now let's assume that you have built an uh, IDP, then what? So in my experience, uh, you have to constantly prove the value of an IDP to leadership to justify you know, ongoing investments and to developers as adoption is not guaranteed. So my recommendation is for you to treat your IDP like a product. What that means is that there needs to be an active roadmap with prioritization, uh, the, the prioritization happening at the feature level with proper themes allocated. If you already have a roadmap, openly share it with your developers and also consider hiring a, a product manager. And I'm not being biased here. Like any product, you know, there is a, a constant need to lower adoption barriers and, and doing kind of regular outreach via blog posts, lunch and learns and presentations is obviously a good idea. Uh, there is also, you know, status quo bias for existing technology. So in some cases, uh, disruption may be needed to change the mindset of users. We actually did that with Ethos Flex in our case. Next, I can share an example from Flex where we have formalized an open contribution inner source model uh, to tap into Adobe's developer muscle. We leverage uh, GitHub projects, which is based on Kanban, and we have a dedicated cohort which reviews all incoming PRs and uh, basically provides guidance on various testing strategies. Um, so far, we've already merged more than 10 open contributions uh, from clients in a very short amount of time. So we essentially help clients get unblocked quickly, and we also are solving problems at scale. Finally, I'll cover some product best practices. So it's important to strategically build features you know, for your platform and prioritize you know, features that boost uh, mass adoption. Uh, another approach which could help is to forge a symbiotic uh, partnership with other product teams. You know, in our example, uh, we are only supporting our new API gateway platform with Flex and not with the you know, incumbent uh, CI-CD tool. Finally, for any you know, old platform uh, and essentially moving users from the old platform to new, it's very important to proactively you know, announce, communicate end of life dates and build any migration or conversion tooling to bring users over. So what's next? So I've included a comment from one of our clients who shared that uh, you know, customization is possible with Flex, but it is hard to use. So we are prioritizing the simplification uh, of the platform by abstracting onboarding and the post onboarding experience to reduce uh, the need for developers to edit complicated YAML files. We are also focused on uh, replacing verbose documentation with a more uh, simplified set of technical docs. Now that we are in production, you know, we are quickly learning that it is very different than being just production ready. Uh, our current focus is on hardening stability, uh, performance and preparing for 10x scale. We are also working constantly to improve our action, uh, the actionable error, error messages, which trigger a notification in Slack to communicate the error message and link to the troubleshooting guide to help developers get to the root cause faster. We are also working to you know, future-proof our existing Flex architecture using Argo to prepare for scale. Finally, you know, we are integrating Flex uh, in our developer portal on Backstage to reduce context switch by consolidating all CI-CD insights in one place, but also uh, providing developers access to raw diagnostic tools if necessary. So that's a wrap. Uh, so you can connect with me either on LinkedIn, Twitter, or my personal blog. Thank you.
And I'll also be available to answer any questions on Slack.